comba moi. Konya wa santore no spiritu o jiwau. Korini uh, tuiti uh, totemo uh, tano shimi ni shiti masu. So, what I just said to you was good evening, and I'm going to tonight talk to you about the spirits of Santori. And I'm super excited about it. So as you can tell, I love all things Japanese, um, or hopefully you could tell a little bit from that introduction. And um, when the opportunity came up to talk about these spirits um, tonight, I, I just couldn't miss the opportunity. And I think when you think about Suntory, and particularly if you work uh, in the wine industry or spirit industry anywhere, you think of Suntory as a, a really big house and you don't necessarily think of it as the quality uh, of what comes from there. And hopefully tonight, taking you through uh, these three spirits, you'll not only learn a little bit more about Suntory, um, but see how instrumental the House of Suntory is in the history of Japanese whiskey in particular. So just to start with a, a little bit of history, and I've I mean, the history of Suntory is immense, and I've just condensed it down a little bit, well, a lot, um, because we need to get on to trying um, these three spirits. So essentially, um, when we look at um, Suntory, you know, Japan uh, is a very, very big market for whiskey, and it actually has been since the 1800s when the ruling classes embraced the West that whiskey really became important in um, Japanese culture. But it wasn't actually until the 1920s that Shinjiro Tori uh, realized the potential of Japanese whiskey. And he actually then started the journey to start making whiskey in Japan. So the Japanese whiskey um, industry in terms of the local production, because there's not the same protection um, until recently in Japan that there is in other parts of the world. So the locally made uh, Japanese whiskey, that didn't really start until the sort of 1920s onwards when Shinjiro Tori um, saw the potential for it. They actually know how to make um, Japanese whiskey. That did come from Scotland and it was actually a chemist um, called uh, Masutaka uh, who went to Scotland, learnt all of what they do there and came back to Japan and worked with Shinjiri Tori who started Suntory, what is now Suntory, uh, and um, they worked together to make the first Japanese whiskies. Um, they've then, um, the house has expanded and they now have a number of different distilleries under the sort of House of Suntory brand, if you like, um, and some very, very well um, known ones, probably the one that springs to mind would be Hibiki. Um, but they also have really, really good vodka and gin. And it's actually their vodka um, that I'm going to start with here. And I'll just bring that um, into the forefront there. So we've got this lovely vodka and it's called haku. And haku actually means white in Japanese. It can also mean brilliant. And Japanese language is fascinating in that um, the words often have a very literal meaning, but then have an implied or a cultural meaning as well, which is why you end up with white also brilliant. So this is made from 100% Japanese uh, white rice. And white rice we often think of as the staple of Japanese cuisine and rice is, but very pure white rice is usually reserved for the imperial family and for celebrations and for very special times. So the fact that this is 100% um, white rice and polished to a very high standard um, gives you an idea of the quality that goes into this. So first the white rice is fermented and it's fermented with a rice koji to make a mash. Um, that mash is then distilled through pot stills um, to create a rice spirit. And this process actually takes place in Kyushu. So the actual production of um, Haku vodka is um, like a journey around Japan. So it takes place in um, Kyushu and then it's actually blended and filtered in Osaka. And in Osaka, when they do the filtration for this, they're actually using a bamboo charcoal, charcoal filter, which is similar to some of the technique in Japan for filtering water. 
and it, it has an incredible ability to filter but also bamboo is a fast growing plant and one that they have an abundance of in Japan so adds to a sustainability um, approach to this vodka. So what I'm going to do is, oh, first of all, I've got um, a little glass here. I'm just going to grab that and let me just pour a little bit of the vodka and I'll have a taste of it um, straight first. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this smaller glass because we're just going to have a little taste. And then what I'm going to do is show you how I think this is best enjoyed. So just got a little glass there for a taste. Mmm. The purity, smooth, soft right through to the finish. It's a beautiful vodka, very, very nice. But the best thing I think to do with the vodka is in my book is a martini. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna use my little glass here again, and I'm going to end up with out putting it all over the table, hopefully. Um, I think I've managed to get most of it into the glass. So we're going to have a couple of measures there of um, the Haku vodka. And then actually what I'm going to use is this wonderful um, vermouth. This is the Tosti uh, extra dry vermouth. So this is a Italian vermouth uh, which comes from the Piedmont region. Uh, and um, I particularly like this as a vermouth. So that's the, um, the Tosti there, extra dry. So then what we're going to do is, my ideal for it is just a little bit of a stir there. And then I have these really gorgeous, aren't these, these cute? These are very, very little glass cocktail forks. Um, antique ones, probably from the sort of early 1900s there, Italian glass, we think. And um, the best thing there, of course, is a lovely little olive into my martini. How great is that? Look, I'm gonna have to have a taste. Oh, that's stunning. So recommend that, that's how I would drink the Haku. So that's the Haku vodka. Um, and you know, you could mix it of course with some soda, but I think that's the perfect drink for it. Right, so on to the next one. And you'll notice there's a problem in this bottle. Um, and this will tell you how much I enjoyed this product. So this is the Roku Gin. Now, Roku actually means six. Um, so it's the number six in Japanese. And um, this, uh, the, the reason for calling it six is that there are six Japanese botanicals used in the production of this gin. And um, it's actually the first gin that's been made by Suntory. Uh, and it has, you know, the traditional um, sort of junipers that, uh, sorry, botanicals that you'd expect, like juniper, orange peel, lemon peel, some coriander, cinnamon, amongst others. But it also has these six botanicals that are very Japanese. And the six botanicals that they, they use in this are related around the four seasons in Japan. And you can tell through all of these products, actually, there's a real cultural element to them and a respect for the culture because seasons are very, very important to the Japanese. So the first one is for spring. There's Sakura leaf and Sakura flower in this, and that's the spring botanicals. There's Sencha tea and Gyokuro tea for summer. Then there's Sancho pepper, which is for autumn and then yuzu peel, which is for winter. So that's the six Japanese um, botanicals um, that are in this. Now, to enjoy this one, um, I've got this lovely glass here, and you'll notice I've got this incredible ice cube in it, and this takes me back to um, being in Japan and very sad that it looks like I won't be able to go this year. In fact, I long to go back there, but when you have... Um, a cocktail or have a drink in Japan. It's very, very traditional for the bartender to have handcrafted um, an ice sphere. And I'm very, very lucky um, that Anthony that works with me at Glengarry has handcrafted for me um, some spheres. And what the reason for a sphere is that they melt slower. Um, and particularly when you're drinking whiskey, which we're going to come to in a minute, um, you don't want um, the ice to melt too quickly into your drink. 
Um, but with this Roku, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of this um, into the glass. I think I'm on the end of the bottle. It's very, very sad. Um, and just in terms of first a taste. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, there's that lovely sort of savouriness from the tea. There's sort of an Nanami character to it. And then that uzu really comes through. Um, and then a little bit of a spice too. It's a beautiful gin. And how I prefer to drink this is with East Imperial's Burma tonic. So just a little bit of tonic. You don't want too much tonic because you want to be able to taste um, the gin. And then I have these beautiful limes, which we actually grow these. So this is very, very short food miles, all of three meters from the tree. Um, so I'm just going to pop um, a lovely bit of lime in there. And for me, that's the absolute perfect way uh, to enjoy Roku uh, gin. This is with some East Imperial Burma tonic and a little slice of lime. Cheers. Right. We've got three drinks on the go, sorry, two drinks on the go, but we're about to have a third one. So let's go to the last one. And this is Toki. So Toki uh, in Japanese means time. Um, and um, I don't know what that's a play on, but maybe the time that it, it's going to take you from this end to this end, I'm not too sure. Um, but this is a blended whiskey that comes from Centauri's three distilleries. So there's Yamazaki, Haku, Shu, and Chita. Uh, the three distilleries, and this is a very young um, whiskey that is blended from the three distilleries. Um, its composition is very, very different to Centauri's other blend, which is Hibiki, because the main um, components in it are actually a single malt from Hakashu and grain whiskey from Chita. So I'll just give it a taste first of all. Um, so on the nose there, yes, yeah, citrus, um, lime, marmalade, a little bit, a little bit of dried tea there as well. Mm. On the palate, it's just so smooth. It's it's lovely and round. It's got vanilla, sort of citrus characters, a little bit of almond, a little bit of a honey characteristic too. Now, the best way I think um, to enjoy this. Um, and as I said before, these lovely spheres that I've got, here's one I prepared earlier, is I do think a little bit of water um, just to cut through this would be nice, but don't see the need for a mixer with this. My ideal way to drink it would be exactly like this, just over that lovely sphere there, and that sphere is going to very slowly melt into that. Um, it's probably not going to have melted by the time I get to the bottom, to be honest. because that's delicious but that'd be the way that I drink that so there you have it you've got the lovely Toki um, whiskey um, we've got the Roku uh, gin there with the gin and tonic and going back to that beautiful first drink that I made there um, which was made with the lovely Haku vodka uh, and the Tosti vermouth uh, so I hope you've enjoyed listening to me about those spirits tonight. Um, you'll find them in all Glengarry stores and on our website. So domo arigato.